What's up everyone, it's Houndex here, and today I'm gonna to be doing a three-year update on the Samsung G5 Odyssey monitor. I'll be talking about my experience of using this monitor in the past three years, any issues I've had, and whether I would recommend it. With all that said, let's get right into the video. So to start off with some context, here are the specs of my unit. My monitor came with a 1440p display, a 27 inch screen with 1000 arc curved. Uh, the panels are 144 hertz VA, uh, one millisecond grade of gray response time, uh, 250 nits, support for AMD FreeSync and support for HDR. I got this monitor three years ago on sale for $230. So just some background on why I got this monitor in the first place. Back then, I wanted something that could do both content creation and gaming at an affordable price. And in order to satisfy my gaming needs, I just wanted something that had a decently high refresh rate. I was going from 1080p 60 hertz that time, so 144 hertz seemed like the option for me. And for content creation, I just wanted a higher resolution, so um, I picked 1440p resolution. And then I just found this monitor, which happened to be both 1440p and 144Hz at a relatively affordable price. And I wasn't really looking for a monitor that would break the bank like some of those 4K monitors at 120Hz. That'd be the most ideal monitor that I'd go after for. Uh, but of course, those monitors are on the expensive side. So my overall experience of using this monitor was pretty good. And like I said before, I was moving from 60Hz 1080p to 144Hz 1440p, so it was a very smooth transition. The resolution change was noticeable for me. Um, I immediately noticed that the pixels were sharper and clearer, and of course the cursor was smoother since it was 60Hz to 144Hz. So I was immediately able to notice an improvement in my gaming experience when upgrading to this monitor. Now for you gamers out there, according to some sources, the response times on this monitor are not the best. Uh, but personally, I felt like it was fine. But to be fair, I did have a drastic change. I was going from 1080p 60Hz to 1440p 144Hz. But still, when I was playing some competitive esports titles or just AAA games in general, I didn't feel like the response times were that bad. And even if they are not that great, it's definitely going to be better than a 60Hz panel. And also, it's a 144Hz monitor anyway, so if you do really care about the response time, it just makes more sense to get a 240 hertz panel at that point. Now, going back to the response times, if you do end up choose picking this monitor, make sure that you go into the settings and change uh, the refresh rate to motion blur reduction. I'll cover more about the best settings for this monitor later on in the video, so make sure you stay till the end. Now, for content creation, the display quality was surprisingly decent. It had a 90% sRGB and 65% Adobe RGB. And I was not expecting this from a $230 monitor. I think the main thing that holds it back is the brightness, which is only 250 nits. But overall, I say the screen quality in terms of colors and for uses of content creation is pretty good. And honestly, the screen quality is probably better than the quality of the response time for this monitor. It's nowhere near the screen quality of a MacBook, but it's still going to be good enough for those who are just on the basic side for content creation. However, I wouldn't recommend this to those who are more on the advanced side. Now for miscellaneous tasks like just daily browsing or watching videos, I think this monitor was fine. The main thing to look out for is whether the curved screen bothers you or not. I think a good component of, that this monitor has is the black equalizer, which allows you to adjust the darkness and brightness of this monitor. So it could be really handy uh, when you're reviewing some dark scenes in a movie and even in gaming, it could also help with some dark shadows and things like that. The black equalizer does come in handy. So as I mentioned before, I said I was going to cover the best settings for this monitor. So here they are. Uh, to start off for the game tab, you want to set the refresh rate to 144. And the black equalizer, I did touch upon this earlier, but this one you just adjust to whichever one you want based on your preference depending on your games. For response time, set that to fastest MBR, which stands for motion blur reduction. This is to ensure that you get the fastest response time possible. For FreeSync, I have that off since I don't have an AMD graphics card, but if you do, you can configure that however you want. For low input lag, I have that on. 
screen size i have that as default which is 16.9 for virtual aim point i have that off now for the settings in the picture tab for brightness i have it set to 100 you definitely want to have the maximum brightness possible for contrast i keep that at 75 and sharpness i keep it at 60 but you can adjust contrast and sharpness however you want based on personal preference for color, I don't really touch those settings, so I would leave them alone. Eye saver mode, definitely turn that off since it interferes with the brightness. By the way, for those who are on the PlayStation 5, uh, back three years ago, I would not have recommended this monitor to those people because the PS5 didn't support 1440p resolution, but now it does as of 2023. So uh, for, for those who are on PS5, this monitor works so now I'm going to go over some of the issues I had with this monitor and potential problems for you guys if you end up going with this. So first, it doesn't have the best response times. I already went over this, so I'm not going to go over it again. But I think another major component that was an issue for me was the brightness. It was just simply not bright enough. Um, that time when I got this monitor, I didn't think that 250 nits was that big of a deal. I thought it was fine. But while I was doing content creation, I really just hoped that it would be brighter. The HDR is also not that great either. It doesn't have good color gamut, so I just had it off the whole time while I was using this monitor. Another downside of this monitor is the build quality. It does come with a cheap plastic structure, so it's not going to feel like it's sturdy at right out of the box. It also has limited ergonomics, and it's not the best for cable management. And if you plan to use a vase mount for this monitor, it's going to be more challenging and it's going to be an extra cost and the last thing to consider is the potential for dead pixels there have been a lot of complaints online saying that this monitor came in with dead pixels i personally did not get any throughout these years of using this monitor but i would be on the lookout for them so here are my final thoughts about this monitor overall i felt like this monitor was a good pick i think the main issue i had with it was the display quality for content creation it had a relatively dim brightness and not the best color game you but back three years ago i didn't think that content creation was going to be a huge thing that i was going to do but now it's something that i do more than gaming so um, i wish this monitor could have had some of that but with that all aside i still think it's a really good monitor for gaming especially considering its price and the market situation back then i think late 2020 that was the time when the chip storage was just getting started so 230 for this monitor is a really good price and i haven't had any breakdowns or any damages to this monitor so far so it's still holding up really strong today now who would i recommend this monitor to i would recommend this monitor if you're into the curved design i think that's its main advantage out of all the other competitors right now i think the curved screen provides an immersive experience when you're gaming with this monitor and if gaming is going to be the main thing that you're going to do with this monitor and you just want to get a budget 1440p 144hz panel this monitor is definitely worth it if you can get it under 300 bucks but with that said the market is a lot more competitive now than it was three years ago for these 1440p 144hz monitors so i wouldn't get this monitor if you want a flat design instead of the curved one and if you care about the contrast and color game you or in other words you're into content creation more than you are into gaming if that's the case, there are some options that are better for you. I think the Gigabyte monitor might be one. It does have better contrast and color gamut. If you're interested in any of these monitors mentioned, I'll just drop the links down in the description below so you can check them out. But overall, I think this monitor was pretty solid. Honestly, for the value it provides at a low price of around 230 bucks, I feel like I would have to spend a lot more if I wanted something that was higher quality, that had a better display, better color gamut and you know better response times so that's all i have for this video if you found it helpful make sure to drop a like subscribe for more if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below and with that said i'll see you all in the next one